Welcome once again, everyone, to O'Neill's Grill as we continue with our weekly fan and press lunch and a little football basketball this week as we're in the crossover season. And now we have with us the head coach of the JMU men's basketball, Dukes, Matt Brady. The Dukes the, uh, shared the title last year with three other teams in the Colonial. It was a 12-6 and six, uh, very balanced record last year for a lot of teams. And the Dukes, one of the favorites this year, coming in at number two on the preseason poll. And uh, Coach Brady, your, just kind of your opening thoughts on this upcoming season for the JMU men's basketball Dukes. Well, we're obviously very excited about this group and our team and, and really where our program is. Um, but I, I would temper that enthusiasm with the first bit of uh, news about our, our squad. We have a, a, a junior, Johanny Dallenbert, uh, did sustain a meniscus tear, did have a procedure a few days ago on Friday, expected to be out two to four weeks. Uh, so uh, we, we are grateful that we, uh, we had the surgery done as quickly as we, we found out the MRI exam was, was not good news. Had the surgery, surgery went great. Expect him, you know, hopefully get him back as quick as we can. But for the first few games at least, we'll be without a, a very talented player. Your experience of going back to the drawing boards for these type of circumstances, what have you, uh, what have you scratched off? What have you added on with the loss of Johanny for the first few, day, well, few games? Well, I, I feel like I probably jinxed ourselves. You know, in media day I said, you know, this is the first time I've ever, ever had my entire starting five back, a returning nucleus. And, you know, I, you know, I probably uh, should kick myself in the backside for saying, saying that. But, uh, you know, we're prepared, obviously, and ready to move on. What I tell our group every year is uh, the rotation will inevitably change. Um, injuries are part of you know, basketball. They're a part of sports. And this gives a great opportunity for some other guys who would have had less opportunity. Now get a more su significant opportunity right away. Ron Curry, obviously the leader of this team. What kind of ownership is he taking going into this year? Well, Ron's been tremendous. Uh, Ron Curry is a senior, and he's, and he's been a, basically a four-year starter. He's as excited about this group and this team as, as any team he's been a part of. He recognizes that this is really his team, really for the first time since he's been here, uh, that he's, he's the guy that's been here the longest. He's had... Uh, He's been in big games. He's won us big games. And he does feel like, like this is his group, this is his team. And he's taking you know, the responsibility on. We, obviously, we would like him to, to continue to be as vocal as he can be. And in his own quiet way, he talks to his teammates every chance he can in the locker room, on the court. But we've noticed a, a very discernible difference in the volume with which he speaks to his teammates, which is a positive thing. Expect Ron to have a great season. And... Uh, I think he feels the same way. Did you see that part of his game develop late last year, or was that something that he used during the between seasons uh, to, to work upon? No, I think we saw it in January of last year, and, and he just kept evolving as a player. And I, I, felt, I think he felt like he was needed to step up, and he did a remarkable job. He was a terrific player, a borderline first-team All-League player last year, preseason first-team All-League player this year. And a lot of it is because he, he does b believe that this is his team and his program for this year. So we, he's done everything we, you know, we've asked him to do. Uh, he's improved, I think, every year. Uh, he obviously had a significant year shooting the ball last year. And we, everybody recognizes when we're in a close game, Ron's going to have the ball. And that's really the way that he wants it. And really, it's what, what you want from your senior leader, uh, is to, for them to want to have the ball in their hands. And last year, he flourished in that role. What, kind, what style will we see out of, the, out of the Dukes this year? What do you anticipate? Uh, will, will you go up tempo? Will defense be there? We'll, what, we hope defense is there, obviously, but <laughs> what, what do you look at? Well, so we have played full-court man-to-man defense um, from, from the very first day of practice. And while last year we tried to do the same thing, we couldn't quite get it done. We didn't have the depth that we envisioned. This year we do have the depth, particularly in the backcourt. And we are picking up. This has kind of been the plan for three or four years in a row now. Um, and if, if nothing changes, we feel like we have great depth, the most depth that we've had since I've been here. Um, so we are going to use that depth to pick up full court, uh, play full court man to man, and, and really kind of bring the game to our opponent every night out. And that's it's been kind of the plan just about every year. And, uh, you know, it hasn't always played out that way. But in 2013, when we won the league title and went to the NCAA tournament, it was, it was a part of our identity as a team. We liked it then. We wanted to continue to do it. 
Uh, but I feel like this year it's, it's been our best chance to be able to, to kind of play that way, play that style. Um, and we don't envision anything at this point uh, changing that style. The rules for the men's game, not that dramatic a change as it was uh, for the women's game coming up this year, but you do trim five seconds off the shot clock. How does that influence what you're doing? Well, the shot clock being shorter is something that all coaches are talking about. And across the nation, everybody, I think, is deploying some, some kind of a three-quarter trap, whether it be 2-2-1 two, two, or 1-2-1-1. One, Everybody's seemingly using something early in the season. It really remains to be seen whether or not that plays out in January. By the time you get to conference play, uh, our coach is going to rem remain comfortable with employing a defense that maybe they haven't played their whole, their whole career. But I think in reaction to that rule change from 35 to 30, seems to me everybody's trying to get into the shot clock and get in the last 10 seconds of the shot clock defensively by going up the floor and, and making teams tick away at, at it. Um, truth of the matter is we're not playing the way we're playing this year because, because of the shot clock. We, this is the way we've wanted to play for some time, so we're going to play the way we feel we, we can play. And the, the shot clock being shorter may, in fact, benefit us. It may not, in fact, benefit college scoring going up. I, I would say to you nationally, coaches are really – ambivalent about whether or not this is going to change scoring and, and there's just as many coaches that feel that scoring could potentially go down as it will go up. I think you may sh see shooting percentages go down as they may go up so uh, I give a nod to the, the NCAA for trying it. Uh, I think it makes sense in all likelihood but I'm, I'm not sure the intended consequences are going to be what were the foreseen consequences. All right, thank you for that perspective. Coach, we'll open it up to other members of the media here at O'Neill's Grill. Coach, when you look at the player and the individual that Ron Curry is today, how much of that is because of the growth that he went through in that second half of the season? How was that a turning point for him as a player? Well, you, you know, Ron's not a very vocal guy, and he's not a very demonstrative guy, but he, he had to take – responsibility for this team last year being the only junior starter one of the youngest starting five in our in the league um, and I think he, he he recognized it and he flourished in that role uh, I think if if there were other juniors on that team or if there were other seniors on that team I'm not sure he that his growth would have been as quick um, so in a very real way he benefited by being the oldest guy on a young team and I think we're going to continue to see him grow you know, the thing, I would, the thing I say about Ron Curry is that he has become the player we thought he would be when we recruited him. You know, when we recruited him, he was the highest rated player to come into the league that year. And I think he, he kind of uh, validated those rankings last year. Uh, and in, in his sophomore year, I thought he was up and down, but showed some growth as a player and as a person. And I think across the board as a junior, he, he, he really developed as a person on and off the court. He's much more comfortable being in the spotlight. He's much more comfortable... I think with his classmates, not just his teammates. And then when you look at the players who are returning, like, like Jackson and Winston, even Yohani, do you see them kind of taking the cue from Ron, taking the memos that, hey, he's stepping up, they should too? Yeah, I, I do. I, you mentioned two guys that I think really want to take ownership in this team is Jackson and Yohani, and, and they are making strides. The other guy that I think has done a remarkable job trying to take ownership of this team is Tom Vidanovich who I think very similarly has gone through growth as a p person on and off the court. Uh, and we hope that he continues to grow as a person. Uh, but he's grown as a player. He's a remarkably much more coachable guy. And in, in, in our view as a coaching staff, you know, we recognize that guys that are 18 to 22 think they have all the answers. Invariably, they learn that they don't. And Tom has learned lessons I think are invaluable. And he's really taken to heart. And we hope that he kind of continues to kind of walk the path that he's walked because we, we're very hopeful that he continues to grow as a, as a person and as a player. Uh, I think he's certainly gotten better. He's, uh, he's exponentially more coachable. Um, and I think he's got room to grow in that regard. But I think those four guys really want to be leaders on his team. And I think the other guy, that Winston Grays, was, was a starter, came off the bench for the last 14 games of the year and handled that role with great responsibility and maturity. And whether, whatever his role is, what we have a, uh, a great confidence in with Winston is he's going to handle his role really well. Uh, he's, really become, he's really a mature guy 
uh, and he helped us win a lot of games last year. So that's a really solid nucleus of people, not just players. And, and I think they're really on the, on the same page in all regards. So hopefully this team can make another step. Coach, you've been able to see your team get some competition, scrimmaging. What have you most been most pleased with this early on that they've been able to do? Yeah, what, what I've been most pleased with with this team really is the bench has been the loudest it's ever been. And, you know, we, we, we scrimmaged twice and empty gyms by NCAA rule. Our team was remarkably louder than the other two teams when we did something positive. Our bench was standing up. They were loud. They were clapping. And when our, when our kids came out of a scrimmage, you know, there was high fives all the way down the line. And that's another step for our group. And beyond the X's and the O's and the execution, uh, I can't tell you that's invaluable for our coaching staff to recognize that our players recognize that we're all in this together. And, you know, part of our slogan, all in this together, um, you know, we're all in. And this group has been all in for two scrimmages. I foreseeing this, you know, kind of being a snowball that gains strength through the year. Invariably, we're, we're going to take on some water here. We're, we're not going to go undefeated, we don't think. Uh, but I think this group is very, the strength in this numbers and the strength of mind of this group is tremendous. You told me a couple of weeks ago you weren't sure who your starting five was going to be. You knew Curry, but outside of that, you really weren't sure. That's a positive thing because you've got some nice pieces to put in place, don't you? Right, we, and we haven't decided, actually. You know, we'll, we'll probably decide in the next four, you know, 24 hours what our starting lineup is. Uh, there's a lot of different combinations we can put on the court. Um, unfortunately, one of the combinations obviously does not include Johanny, um, you know, who was a virtual starter, cer uh, certainly a starter for our team. Ron is the one guy that I feel really comfortable with. Uh, Jackson's a guy that I think has earned it through his play last year. And I think our players recognize the competition is open. And there's great competition in this group. And, uh, you know, there's, there's 12 or 13 guys that are really fighting hard every day, and we're going to keep getting better every day. Uh, that's some tough news on Johanny. Uh, how'd the injury happen? Well, we're not exactly, Johanny's injury, the meniscus tear, we're not exactly sure when it happened. Um, he had been complaining about discomfort uh, in one part of his knee for some time. Um, you know, this past, a week ago today, I think he had the MRI um, and he had the surgery, got the results on Wednesday, had the surgery on Friday. Really grateful to our sports medicine people that we expedited the surgery that was initially, you know, going to be put on the books for today. We asked them if they could put on the books ASAP and Tom Custer and his group, you know, obliged us in that regard and put on the books with Dr. Miller and his associates. So we got it done last week on Friday. So that was for us a, a huge thing because you never know how quickly a player is going to come back from uh, that kind of surgery. And we're, you know, got our fingers crossed it happens quicker. His, his recovery happens quicker. Which knee was that? Great question. <laughs> right or left, coaches? Yahani down there. Bill? Left. That's it. In the Georgetown scrimmage this, <laughs> this weekend, who'd you start uh, in place of Yohani then? In the Georgetown scrimmage, who took Yohani's spot? Uh, Poyish Shakis started in place of Yohani. And may, in fact, start on Friday in Richmond. We'll see. Um, you know, talking to Bill earlier, he had mentioned that he felt like uh, Luke Each had been one of the guys who took one of the biggest jumps. I mean, is this his opportunity to get in the regular Pius. rotation? Pius? No, uh, Ivan. Ivan, no, he's got a great opportunity to be in the rotation. You know, I've been meeting with the players individually. We're going to meet with them today and again tomorrow. I've met with everybody by, by the end of tomorrow. Richmond presents for us a very unique game plan because they are so, they are so different defensively. And what you have to do, really, they're very difficult to drive the ball on. I think it's what you try. You plan on driving Richmond. Everybody tries to drive Richmond. Um, and what you have to do is you have to try everything against because they switch almost everything on the perimeter inside. They switch almost every screen. So you have to try and post against Richmond. You have to try and drive against Richmond. You certainly hope that the ball goes in from three-point range. And... What I would say to our group individually, which I've already done with four guys, the rotation on Friday may not, may not in fact look anything like the rotation on Monday, which is a completely different animal than Richmond on Friday. So uh, everybody's going to get an opportunity to impact our group on the court during the course of 40 minutes at some point, whether that's November, December, don't know. But 
it's related to how you practice and how productive you are in practice and in games. Yeah, you mentioned the lineup could change on a game-by-game -game basis, but I mean in the grand scheme with Yohani out, could you see more three or four guard lineups being used? Yeah, you know, we have seven guards, you know, and, and we're going to have three of those guys on the court almost at all times. Um, so we'll, we'll play three perimeter guys and two forwards almost exclusively. Um, it really hasn't come up yet that we'll play a small lineup, which we've, which we've done from time to time. Uh, we're pretty invested in, in playing the guys that, that are playing and gives opportunity to, to a guy like Ivan Lukic. In the Georgetown uh, scrimmage, what was the format, who won, and uh, from your side, who stood out? Uh, we played six 10-minute quarters, and at the end of two quarters, it was very, very close. The third quarter, they outscored us by a few. The fourth quarter, we both played uh, exclusively zone, and they shot the ball extraordinarily well. Uh, I thought that our three-point field goal percentage defense for the first three quarters was very, very good. We went zone. And they, they went four around one, and, and the one guy was in the low post, and they shot the ball great. So the fourth quarter, they handled us. And the quarter five, was I thought, was relatively close. And quarter six, I'm not even sure how that went, to be honest with you. So in three of the five quarters, really close. In the fourth quarter, I thought that they got us easily. And, I mean, who stood out on your side? Was Ron leading the way as usual? Well, you know what was interesting? Who stood out for, for JMU? I would say to you, I'm not sure that anybody stood out. What we were pleased with was that we, we competed on every play in that scrimmage. And, and we didn't do everything right. We, we made mistakes. But when you play a team like Georgetown, which plays offensively a lot like Richmond plays with the Princeton offense, um, we made some mistakes that we know we're going to have to clean up and correct for Friday. Um, we didn't spend a whole lot of time walking through Georgetown's offense. Uh, and I thought we, we played smart. We played pretty darn hard. We, we rebounded the ball really well against a really big team. Uh, we thought we made it hard on them to score the ball in a lot of ways. Uh, we didn't shoot the ball particularly well that day, uh, and I still thought that was, you know, it was competitive. And I use the word competitive because this, every one of our guys and all and everybody played, everybody competed, and everybody knew what we needed them to do to be in that situation. So I, I was really pleased with how hard we played, and I was really pleased with, with our bench, bench decorum. And then last question for you, how's, how's Yohani handling the situation? Is he, is he in a good place? Yeah, you know, Yohani is a, a little up and down. I, I think initially he was really despondent almost, but he's bounced back. He, he's been a cheerleader for our team. He was at our practice all day yesterday. Um, he was, you know, he's off crutches by today, I think. He's already on the bike a little bit. His, his attitude was phenomenal. His attitude has been great since we've had him. Um, and I think that's true of our team. He's got a great attitude. I think our team's got a great attitude, and, and that's it's something we would expect from Johan. He, he's been tremendous. Obviously, last year the conference was really, really close. Do you, you kind of expect another dogfight this year? Yeah, you know, our conference last year was really, really close. And, you know, going into the last day, any one of four teams could have won the, the league title outright. Um, so I would expect more of the same. Uh, you know, the, the unique thing about the race this year is that Hofstra is a uni unanimous pick by the coaches to be the number one team. Um, but I think beyond that, one through six, you know, anybody can finish anywhere. You know, I think it's going to be a crazy year. I do think this, I've said this repeatedly, that the league is taking a step up, one through ten in most instances, because we only lost six of the top 30 scorers in the league. So I think as a whole, this league is taking a step up. And I can foresee that being the case again next year because this league doesn't lose a lot of starters again next year. So I think that, you know, as, as a conference, you know, as fans of the league, we're going to be really pleased with it. As coaches, we look around and say, hell, this is, this is going to be really hard because the quality of the league just continues to improve, and I think that's going to be the case for the near future. Talk a little about Shakir and kind of how he, uh, he's kind of adjusted pretty well. And Shakir Brown. Yeah, I, I think Shakir Brown had the, had the most to learn. Uh, he and Kevin Kangi, our freshman, and they've both done a really good job making a jump. You know, when you go from junior college basketball to four-year basketball, there's a lot you have to learn. You certainly have to learn how hard you got to play to be in a game at this level. Um, but Shakir has made a nice jump. So has Kevin. Um, so I, I would expect both those guys to have a great impact on our team. And I, I think, and I just came from a meeting with Shakir at 11 o'clock. Uh, you know, he's a very quiet guy. He's a fairly humble kid. Uh, really good basketball IQ, but 
in his own words, he's learned a lot in the short time he's been here. Coach, you start off the season with uh, two regional opponents on the road. You at Richmond, then West West Virginia a week from today. How do you hope that will set the tone for the rest of the season? Also, just great to get the brand out to you know people who don't normally go to JMU games. Right. So I, I think any time you play on the road, you know you're up up against a little bit. We're playing two quality teams. I think these are two teams that have NCAA aspirations. A year ago, Richmond, you know, was nearly a was in the last four end of the NCAA tournament. And a year ago, West Virginia is in the Sweet 16. Um, so th this is, these are two great challenges for our team. But we scheduled these games for a reason. You know, we have similar aspirations as a program. And our group, you know, feels like they're going to compete. And so I think it's two great games for our team. And then, you know, on the heels of that, three really terrific games the following weekend, all at home. Um, so we hope that we are going to learn a lot about our team and, you know, be prepared for the rest of this non-conference schedule. You're done, gentlemen? Okay, thank you very much. The Dukes on the road at Richmond on Friday night, and they will face the West Virginia Mountaineers one week from today, Monday, so Coach Brady will not be here on Monday as uh, the Dukes will be facing the Mountaineers in Charleston, a neutral site game at Charleston, West Virginia, on Monday night as well. We will indeed have Coach Kenny Brooks here next Monday as well as, of course, Coach Everett Withers. As far as a men's basketball coverage, once again, all home games on Madison HD Sportsnet free video presented by the JMU Alumni Association and the JMU Intellos Wireless Broadcast Network will feature News Radio 550 WSVA. That's 550 AM as well as 92.1 FM. Thank you to O'Neill's. By the way, O'Neill's will also be hosting a NCAA women's soccer watch party here at 4.30 this afternoon as the JMU women's soccer team will learn its destination and opponent to open up the NCAA tournament. Thank you, everyone.